What's wrong with innocence? What is wrong with being in a state of innocence, we ask you? It is known and understood by those who know and study the word of God, who take time to study the different depths that are found within the word of God. It is known that there's something called the dispensations of time, the dispensations of the ages. And it is known that in the history of man, that the dispensation that began, although the dispensation of eternity existed before that, but in the history of man, ours begins with the dispensation of innocence. And so we ask you here now, so far removed from that beginning dispensation of our time, we ask you again, what's wrong with innocence? It is recorded in Genesis 2, chapter 2, verse 17, these words, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And so the Lord God made a statement of fact. And so the Lord God confirmed what would take place at that point when we as a people lost our great state of eternal innocence, when we lost the ability to live on, to live on forever in a state of innocence, when we lost what he had given us, that great gift of being innocent. It was not at a time when evil did not exist in the universe, nor was it at a time when God's laws had not been transgressed, no, for it is a fact that the devil and the fallen angels themselves existed at that time. And yet God did a marvelous thing in creating a world in six days and in creating in that world a being in his own likeness who now was innocent, although such sinfulness existed in the universe. And so it was, and so we were. And yet, down into that place of wonder, into that Garden of Eden, came the devil, Satan himself. And so even in this world, we disregard such things and we step out of our front door as if we have no great enemy. And so we are attacked again and again and led into the wrong way, out of the way of coming to Jesus, of living in Jesus, and so it was in the garden when the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Ye shall not surely die, said the devil to our great grandmother Eve, ye shall not surely die. And in that moment, in that moment he brought our great grandmother to a place of unbelief, to a lack of faith, to a state of daring to call the Lord God of the universe a liar. And so Satan blasphemed and brought her heart to a place of blasphemy, to a place of blaspheming the Lord God, to a state we all find ourselves in when we dare to transgress, to sin against the Holy God, to refuse Jesus Christ, to refuse salvation, to refuse the word of God. And so she did. Ye shall not surely die, lied the serpent to Eve, and so the devil is in his wickedness. In the garden, he said, eat, when God said not to. In the wilderness with our Lord Jesus Christ, he said, die, throw yourself down from the pinnacle of this temple. Oh yes, he tried to kill our savior and he tries to kill us all when we seek to step towards Jesus Christ. On the cross, 
on the cross. What did the devil say on the cross? On the cross he said to give it up, to quit, to stop. Come down from the cross, he cries to the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh yes, he speaks to him through that other thief and says, If thou art the Messiah, then save yourself and save us. Come down. The devil dares to say to Jesus, and so will say to every Christian who dares to rise up and come out of the mold made by the world system that the devil has stood at the head of. When you seek to serve God truly, the devil will always come, seek to get you to eat of the world, of things you should not, to die out in the wilderness, and to come down from the cross that Jesus has commanded you to take up every day and follow him. You, dear listener, were innocent. You were. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we just read, yes, you were. In this place of Adam and Eve, you were. Why, even in your own life, in much of a way, you were. Let me ask you a question. What would you rather be like? Would you rather, or who would you rather be like? Would you rather be like, say, say, some great soldier on the battlefield who is going forth and is killing the enemy and doing great things with honor and with strength? Would you rather be as some famous person upon the stage there with the lights flickering and the people in the audience as if worshiping you calling out your name, hungering just to touch your hand? Or would you rather be as a baby, there lying innocent, there so much closer to God than you find yourself to be so much near the heart of the Lord God himself? As the Bible says, as the Bible has said, that except ye repent, he shall all likewise perish. As the Bible has said, God giveth grace to the humble, but resisteth the proud. The baby in the crib, or the big man on the battlefield, I have learned from the word of God, and I have learned from experiencing God, that I would much rather be that baby. You say, brother, what are you talking about? What nonsense is this? You call it nonsense? Then when the Lord Jesus Christ said that when one would smite you on the one side of your cheek, that you should turn the other side for them to smite you there as well, that you would call that nonsense. And yet the Lord Jesus Christ, they're sitting upon a hill on what we call the Sermon on the Mount, called us all back to innocence, called us all back to what that baby enjoys and to what you no longer can enjoy because you were innocent. But in your life, through one sin, through one turn towards the devil, to one listening and then responding and acting on what the serpent had whispered in your ear, you have lost, you have lost, you have lost that state of innocence, but of the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil. Oh yes, you were once beyond and before such things, but you chose that instead. A little twist here, perhaps a movie you shouldn't have watched, perhaps some other thing that the people immerse themselves into, our poor young people. Oh, they start out so well, they start out so wonderful. We see them and we behold them, and yet they listen to one so-called friend after another, and they integrate themselves into the group they find them in, and they find them at last rising and attempting to rise higher. In the world system, the Bible says that the devil is the god of this world, of this age. Oh yes, Moses was humble, the Bible teaches us that he was the most humble man on the face of the earth. David, young David, was so humble. 
when his pastor, King Saul, sought to destroy his life and his work for God, and when he had the occasion to cut that man's head off, to stop these attacks in his innocency. Before God, he refused. Job, Job, oh, Job endured so much. Criticize, criticize, criticize by those who should have loved him, supported him, and encouraged him. And yet in his innocence before God, he endured all that. Oh, but each one of these was so blessed in the end. You were innocent. And yet you were warned. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it says, thou shalt not eat of it. You were warned in your lifetime through one way or another, through this method or that. The Lord God came to you and warned you. Oh, come back with me, oh listener, come back with me. Know where that you have never been, but to where you were in your age of innocence, to where you were when your heart was like a child, to where you were when you would hear the things of God, where you would tremble, yes, where you would tremble, like that king who trembled and said to Paul, oh, almost, almost you persuade me to be a Christian, and you are almost you were almost persuaded, yet you did not heed the warning, thou shalt not eat of it, and you took the world, and you took it, and like an adulterous wife who sins against her husband, you sinned against your God, and you sought after things, after events, after a useless consumption of your time, you turn from God. And so you were innocent, and so you were worn, and so you died. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. You died, oh, you died. Have you read the Bible before? Have you read this passage that we're sharing with you now? If you did, in the first times when you read these words, did you actually stop to think, what is God talking about? Adam did not die. Eve did not die. They went on to have children even. They went on to live almost a thousand years. What do you mean you'll die? Is it that God died? Is it? that Satan in the form of that serpent was true? No, friend, but I understand you thinking such things. For when I first read these words, I wondered. But when I wondered, I thought next, not because of good in me, but because the Lord Jesus Christ, by that time, had saved me from sin. I thought God will show me what that means later. And through the 41 years in Christ that I've lived, he's shown me again and again. You died. You died to the Lord God. You died to the presence of Almighty God. You died. You died. What do you think heaven is like? I have here next to me 14 volumes of the works of John Wesley. And the first complete books there are the complete journal of his life and contained within those four volumes is an experience of a young girl recorded by John Wesley himself, who did die, as they say, clinically died, her body died, and she went to heaven. And in those few minutes, she spent days and weeks in heaven and came back to tell us that heaven was a place of innocency, that heaven was a place where people are like babies themselves, where people are so much again living as in the Garden of Eden, but better, in a state of innocency, but you died. You died. In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. 
No place for you in God's home in heaven. No place for you in God's home when he returns here to earth. No place for you except in hell and then in the lake of fire. I am sorry to bring this bad news to you, but I must not lie to you. I must not lie. And the day that you ate thereof, you died. You preferred the world instead of Jesus. You preferred sin instead of salvation. You preferred the devil's systems here in the world to distract you from God, to detract from what God has put in your heart, you preferred that in your life. Now into this moment that God in his mercy has compelled me to speak to you regarding these things. You were innocent. You were. Oh, you were innocent. You were warned. You were, you were born. You died, oh you died. You died and you die more daily to the ability, to the possibility of ever believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, according to the word of God, but such were some of you, but you are washed. And yet you were dead in trespasses and sins. He dares even to tell us after being saved and washed in the blood of Jesus, he does not let us forget that we were where you are. And so, Jesus, Jesus, innocence is obtained in Christ Jesus alone. Yes, in the midst of the thick darkness, we find a ray of light. We find one way and one way only on the cross where Jesus died, and yet in your pride, in your haughtiness, in your great life of muscle and you being the one, you refuse that great sacrifice. Jesus dying on a cross to believe on him and be saved, you will do it yourself, you have said. But you cannot, you cannot, you are dead, dead, dead. You are dead in trespasses and sins. As it is written and recorded in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians and the 22nd verse, for as in Adam all die, you are dead. You died in Adam, you were born dead, and yet the grace of God hath appeared unto all men, and so According to the word of God, which is always true, the grace of God appeared to you. But you have not believed on Jesus. Is there grace left for you? Have you committed what our Lord Jesus called the unpardonable sin? Have you blasphemed away the Holy Spirit of God when he came to speak to you and one last time you refused him and now as it says in the word of God like a dish you have been wiped and placed down upon the shelf and no longer shall the Spirit of God move you? Is that your case in your death? In your death? In your death? You will do it every time. You say, what is this connection with Adam and I? How is it you connect me with a man who is so great of a grandfather and so far removed from my life? Because you will do it every time. Oh yes, you will go to sin. I saw a little movie, a little movie about Star Wars. The last one they put out, I believe. And the man said to the girl, appalled at her, appalled at her actions. You went straight to the dark side. You go straight to the dark side. Sin, sin, as the word of God says, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed, and you have been so. You will do it every time. And yet, 
In 1 Corinthians 15, 22, we must finish the sentence, oh, for your sake, we finish the sentence, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, alive, alive. You can be alive in Jesus. You can live in Christ Jesus. Innocence is obtained through Christ Jesus alone. Oh yes, you will do it every time, but what of Jesus? What of the God-man, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Savior of the world? Jesus? Jesus will do it every time. Jesus did what he came to do. Jesus, before the foundation of the world, the Bible teaches and says, Jesus was as if slain even then. It was destined to be done, for God cannot lie. And when Jesus said, yes, I will pay for their sins, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden and we lost the race, when the Lord God lost the race of mankind, Jesus said, yes, I will give myself for them. He did what he would do. He was destined to save you from sin. Before he was born, he was destined. But let us be personal about this. Before you were born, Jesus, Jesus had fulfilled the destiny that he was destined for and had paid for your sins. Some, like Job did, in the midst of his great trials, will say, I wish I was never born. But if you were not, then you would not have this great chance Oh, for Jesus, oh, to go away with Jesus, come to him, but then follow him as if he would put his cloak about you and say, come away with me. Oh, come away. Have you not read the Song of Solomon? Come away with me, oh, my dear one. Jesus, Jesus is alive. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Oh, I ask you, look to that one ray of light. Broad is the way which leadeth to destruction, Jesus said. And many there be which go in there, but narrow is the way, and straight is the gate which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Look to Jesus, look to Jesus, and live, and live, and let innocency be Grant it to your heart again that the kingdom of heaven will come and the will of God will be done on earth as it is in heaven in you. Look to Jesus and live.